Welcome to the very first tutorial of Understanding Python and in this tutorial we're going to write our very first Python program. This series aims to get you set up with Python and then learning to program at first to low level and then as we progress to a higher level so that you should end up being able to write some very complicated Python code to do pretty much whatever you want by the end of this series. This series aims to teach Python in a way that allows you to understand because there are so many people I've known who have learned Python and they've just been copying code and not really understanding and you get to a point and you think what now and you haven't understood anything and you just have no clue. It's like trying to learn a foreign language by copying key phrases. If someone says something that you haven't seen before then you're completely stuck. So before we start you can have a look at some of my work at goprogram.co.uk, which is a business that I run with a variety of projects, all of which I have written completely from scratch. Now at this stage you're probably wondering what Python is if you don't already know. And the first thing that most people think of when you say Python is this, a snake. And in fact, Python, their logo is based on a snake for that reason. So now let's really understand what Python is. And if we go to the Wikipedia page, then we find out that Python is an interpreted high level general purpose programming language. If we go through that, then being interpreted, it means that when your computer figures out what you've typed, it will go through it one line at a time in contrast to it being compiled where it creates an executable file from what you've programmed and runs it. It's high level, which means that the statements look a lot like English compared to other languages. It's general purpose, which means that it can be used for a wide variety of cases and programs, ranging from web development to machine learning. And of course, it's a programming language. It was created by Guido Van Rossum and released in 1991. Guido Van Rossum is his name. Python's design philosophy emphasizes co-readability with its notable use of significant white space. So what that means is Python's written in a way that when you look at a Python code, you can sort of figure out what it does without really knowing Python to a high level. And then white space is spaces, tabs, returns, and actually those make up part of the language in contrast to other languages where you could write the entire thing on one line. You cannot do that in Python. Its language constructs an object-oriented approach aimed to help programmers with clear logical code for small and large-scale projects. So the way that the program is made up of language constructs, and if you use object-oriented programming, it's done so that when you read or write it, you know that your code is going to be clear, logical, and again, it can be used for a wide variety of projects. So now let's install some things before we can actually run Python. So the first one is Python itself. So if you go to your favorite browser for a search engine, just search Python. And we'll go to python.org, which is the distributor. And then downloads, which is here. So the current version is 3.8.3, .3, and we'll download that. Obviously, you can download it for other operating systems. We'll just run this. So we want to add Python to path, and this is quite important. And we're just going to install now. Wait for it to install. There we go, all done. And we can close it. And then when you've installed it, you can just check that it's installed by going to command prompt or PowerShell or bash or whatever you want to use and then just typing Python and you see that it says here we've got Python 3.8.3 .3. you'll have the version you just installed and we're actually in the editor so you can then type in commands such as hello world don't forget the quotation marks and it'll return hello world and then to exit you can use uh, Control Z and press enter or you can type exit. I'm just going to type exit. So now let's move on to our next thing we need to install and that's 
pip, which is Python package index. It doesn't actually stand for that. It stands for pip installs Python or pip installs packages. So now I'll just so we're just going to type in install pip. And there we go, pip installation. So there are a couple of ways of doing it. And one way is to just enter these commands and then wait for it to load. And then And then when the install is finished, we'll be able to see. And it's giving me some warnings, but I don't really need to worry. I can just type in pip and we'll see that it's all installed. The other way would, if you don't have curl, for example, if you're using Windows, we can just go to this link here. And then you can either download this file or copy and paste and so I'm going to download this and just run it and if it gives you a list of options to open the file then just pick Python there we go the other way would be to just copy and paste all of this and put it into a Python file but I'm not going to do that because I think it's just there's a massive file uh, to copy and paste, it's a lot easier to do it the two ways I've just shown you. It's kind of interesting that this is actually, if we scroll down, you can see here this is the entirety of pip, and it's actually all being base 85 encoded. And so, if you want to decode all of that, then you can just see exactly what it's all doing. But let's move on to the next install, which is VS Code. And this is really optional, but I think it's great to have. So I'm going to search Visual Studio Code and click on the top one. This is just a lot nicer than the Python editor because it has better UI. You can actually use different languages and it automatically fills in data, whereas the Python UI is a bit outdated. So I'm going to download for Windows. Saving my downloads, and then when it finishes downloading, I'm now going to run it, save it wherever you want, create a shortcut. I don't want a desktop icon, but I'm going to want all of these set up and then install. There we go, all set up. I'm going to launch it. And although we've installed Python and Visual Studio Code, it's not going to run quite yet. So I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to save it in this understanding Python folder as lesson one. First steps. And we want to save it as a Python file, so you can either go all files and then do dot .py or you can just select Python from the drop down menu and I'll save that and here it wants us to install the Python extension and I'm going to do that because it's really useful to have and that's where filling in and formatting your code comes in and sometimes it asks you, asks you to refresh, but I'm just going to leave it for now. So close this, got it. And you might want to install Linter, I'm going to, but again, you don't really have to. And this is actually, it's gonna install it using pip, which we've just installed. So if you look at the end of that command, you've got pip install pylint. And that's how it's going to sort it out. And it's going to be a warning, but I don't really need to worry about it. And so now we're going to write our first program. And we're just going to print hello world. And then save it. 
So this print function here uh, is just going to mean that it's going to output, and then we've got these quotation marks which say that it's text, and then hello world is a thing we want to output, and then the parentheses are part of the syntax, but we'll get onto that later. And you just hit F5, I'm going to run it as a Python file, and it's going to run in the terminal. And there we go, hello world. And that brings us to the end of our first tutorial. And if you enjoy that, then we should have another tutorial, same time, next week. See you then.